uh, strengths. Hey, Nazar, I have another question. Yes. If, so if someone's had COVID already, uh -huh. are they, what's the protocol on, do they get the first shot only or are they, or the yeah. second or, yeah. or is also, is the reaction worse or what's yeah. the information on that? So uh, till now the CDC still recommends the two shots for uh, even if you got infected before with the COVID-19 with the caveat that you can wait, you can uh, maybe allow other people to get the vaccine ahead of you. Uh, mm -hmm. There are studies that saying, especially out of France, there are, it's a uh, uh, official stance there that if you have uh, infect, uh, prior uh, COVID-19 infection, you only need one dose and that's what they're gonna do there. Mm -hmm. There are some studies that support that. Uh, so we'll see if the CDC is going to change their guidelines about that. Gotcha. Um, the latest studies is showing still that those who got infected are still immune six to eight months at least after the infection. The rate of uh, reinfection is still uh, low. Um, it's rare, but it can happen. I have one patient who got reinfected. She uh, tested positive, got better, tested negative afterwards, and three months later got sick again and tested positive. So that's a reinfection. So it can happen. It's rare though. Have they been more severe infections when they've no. been? Okay. No. No. And uh, it also depends if they mount antibodies or not. And um, the thing is with the antibodies, uh, the immunity is not only by antibodies, it's only by T cell immunity. So you have two different kinds of immunities that we'd, we're not testing with antibodies alone. Good to know, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Are, Denise mm -hmm. has a question also in the chat, but maybe Denise, you want to? Yeah, um, I, I think I have my sound on. Um, mm -hmm. We're a big country and uh, we're easily, you know, like Europe all together or something large. Uh, could we be experiencing different variants forming in different parts of the United States that we haven't been revealing uh, because our testing is so limited? And I mean, not the UK one or the South African yeah. one or the yeah. uh, whatever, China. Yeah, uh, that's very so possible. Yeah, that's very possible. We're not doing as much genome sequencing as uh, UK and Europe are doing. They're, the CDC is increasing that cap uh, capability to start to, st to see the mutations and the strains you have. But I read today in the news about California having two new variants that are more contagious than the original one. And another one was in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the university there detected different variants. So it's possible. Uh, the virus uh, keeps mutating. Um, some mutations are... Uh, negligible in impact, some are not. Some makes the virus more contagious. There's question mark about if it's uh, more severe or more deadly, uh, we don't know yet. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Nizar, I, I have a question about um, the logistic of communication. Mm -hmm. How does a physician in a hospital keep track of COVID-19 news, vaccine treatments everything do you do you self educate yourself somewhat so you just keep up with it yourself do you does the cdc contact mm -hmm. you does the fda contact you does like no. who contacts you no one you're you're no. supposed to stay up to date you go to the website see the latest guidelines uh, I have uh, regular emails every morning from CHEST, which is the journal of all uh, lung physicians uh, in the U.S. So they tell me what is the latest, what the new article is about, and you have to stay up to date and read uh, and see. And especially with this uh, new virus, it's evolving. The, what we used right. to do initially in the pandemic um, proved not so effective. Like I mentioned, the hydroxychloroquine, uh, putting the patient right away on the ventilator, it turns out to be not a good idea. Um, giving blood thinners, uh, all of that. So you have to apply some critical thinking and judgment yourself, right? Not mm -hmm. all information is good to take. 
that's true. You need to try to see if it is a reliable source or not. And a lot of time you see it on the news and it's all still a prelim information right. or right. Uh, the pharmaceutical company right. releasing data before being peer reviewed and studied. Right. So just to follow up, if I can as well, related to the variant, I mean, <clears throat> my biggest concern with the variant is that actually so few samples have been sequenced mm -hmm. over yeah. such a short period of time yeah. <laughs> that maybe 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 COVID has been mutated from day one. It's just that we've never we've never mm -hmm. known it, we've never cared for it, and yeah. we've never really, you know. Now, the vaccines were based on one particular sequence, right? The vaccine, the way they, they were designed and the way they were engineered must come from one particular sequence. Mm -hmm. Yes, the original one from China. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, luckily so far, the vaccine have proven effective against not only the original version, but also the UK variant. The one of concern is the South African one that managed to change the, the protein that locked on the cell and enter the cell and replicate. So that's the concern there. And they're already now working on a booster for both uh, Moderna and Pfizer to try to address that issue. Another question? Um, yes. What is your feeling about um, immediately uh, giving people um, an antiviral like radenzivir or other things to sort of nip something in the bud before people have some sort of, you know, explosion of the virus within their, you know, becomes more systemic and so forth? Yeah, it makes sense. You know, the remdesivir are all these are meant to stop or mitigate the replication of the virus. So the sooner to get the medication, the better. Um, uh, I don't know, we cannot use it as outpatient. It needs to be as in the hospital and they need to meet certain criteria, their oxygen level being low and so forth. But again, it um, uh, needs studies uh, to confirm that. I think we had a nice note from uh, Drew that uh, Ben had been asked as a guest and just wanted to officially welcome you on behalf I appreciate of ben. Rotary. <laughs> welcome Ben. <laughs> Thank you. But I actually, I actually have another question. I have a question, um, sure. doctor. Um, as you know, there's several populations that are extremely skeptical about the efficacy of the vaccines. Um, what are some strategies and techniques to encourage people that might not necessarily want to take the vaccine, especially in minority populations where there's a lot of distrust. I know you've been facing that. What, yeah. what are some techniques that you'd like to implement or that can be implemented to fix that? So, uh, initially, <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, initially, even healthcare workers, some of them were reluctant right. to have the vaccines. Uh, uh, I was one of the first to get the vaccine, but many of my coworkers were uh, nervous because they thought it's a new platform, this uh, mRNA uh, method, um, they, although it has been studied for years and years before they started that, not now. But was, as the time goes by, when they see more and more uh, people getting the vaccination, right now we're up to 43 million people in the US who got uh, first dose at least, um, and you see the rate of uh, uh, side effect being low, even the what they concerned about the uh, allergic reaction, it's almost similar to the flu shot. Right. Uh, so um, as time goes by, as more messaging, and you need uh, people from their own community, the church, church leaders, uh, civic leaders, telling them, okay, it's safe, it's effective, then you have more and more uh, people on board. Yeah, shukran, mm -hmm. I, think that, I think you're exactly right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nazar, this might second, be a question. I second that. I think, I think that the lack of trust yes. is only gained, well, not only, but primarily, primarily gained face-to-face -face from someone you already trust. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct. 
Angela, you had a question. Yeah, I was just curious. Is there, this might be controversial, but is there any statistics as far as how many medical doctors have been getting him? Or have they, have, has that kind of been expected that all doctors are getting the vaccine? How, what's that like? Uh, I've Maybe. seen reports about 30% declining so far mm -hmm. as of now. Okay. Uh, it's not set in stone. It's not, uh, again, uh, as time goes um, and depends on which location, how much is uh, the vaccine available. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's uh, certain reluctance uh, and it's getting better now. That's to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Shirley Key again. I, yeah, I, yes. I wanted to ask: Have have you heard anything about uh, accessibility for the minority community as one of the reasons that they are not in the higher numbers? Not so much as being really afraid of it, but the mm -hmm. fact that they many have to travel so far to get the uh, vaccination. So, are that we is... addressing that at all? That is true, and that's why they're now changing uh, the location of uh, vaccine distribution, and they're trying to get it to the community health uh, centers, so they will be having easier way of giving the vaccine. But uh, that's true, accessibility is an issue, um, and the more community centers, the more uh, local pharmacies will be able to give the vaccine, it will be better uh, received. Thank you. I think that's more, is my finding is it's more that I cannot get to the vaccine. I'm not okay. afraid, but where can yes. I go to get the vaccine or the yes. vaccination? Yeah. Thank you for addressing that. Sure, thank you. And of course, it's the... Um, how much is available. They're uh, ramping up the production, but it's still, still not meeting the demand. So hopefully, exactly. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I just wanted to say uh, thank you, Nazar. That was really wonderful and very helpful. I appreciate your Sure. Uh, Carl was now, talking. A yeah, bit. I, you know, um, I seem to remember almost uh, back as far as Thanksgiving, there was a lot of talk on the national stage about engaging uh, Walgreens and these uh, various pharmacies. And it has taken so long to be able to get that coordinated. It really surprises me. I mean, yes. they had the right solution from the very beginning, and yeah. somebody must have dropped the ball. I don't know. Uh, there are a lot, issue, lot of issues in the logistics of distributing the vaccine and getting it in, into the arm. And it was quite frustrating um, a month or two ago that there were some supplies, but they're not able to get it into the uh, arms. And that was quite sad. Um, hopefully it gets better, but it needs a lot of work there. Walgreens is disturbed. My sister got it up in Michigan, but the Pfizer is made in Kalamazoo, and she yeah. lived within a, you know, an hour, and they were driving it to Lansing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tennessee, as far as I know, still does not have Walgreens up. So, yeah. And now the FDA is more likely to approve storing Pfizer vaccine in a regular fr uh, freezer. So that will be helpful also uh, in the logistics of distributing the vaccine. Wow. Mm -hmm. Have they done something different? Is that where they can store it in a regular freezer or? Um, they showed data that it's still safe and for certain time limit, of course, uh, how long they can keep it at, at that temperature in a regular freezer. And mm -hmm. Uh, it seems that they have data to support that. It's the same as uh, getting approval to put more uh, vaccine dose in one vial of the Moderna one. Uh, right. Like the Moderna one had 10 and now they're getting approved to get to put 15. So you have, uh, that will um, improve the production uh, of the vaccine, ramp up more. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments?
Nazar, it is so wonderful. Well, we knew you were special when you Thank came you. down to Rotary Club initially. But now, now you are a, a really nucleus of all about information because remember, you had already prepared us for COVID, even though you didn't know you were preparing us for COVID when you presented the first time. You already mm -hmm. told us about the lungs. So we were on top of things because of you. Thank you very and, much. And now we are your little, now we are your little disciples just to go out and spread information. And we really appreciate everything that you do. And we know that you are taking, your, taking time out of a very busy schedule. And we also are happy that you presented us with something we hadn't thought about doing a service project for the um, helicopter healthcare workers. I mean, yeah. I don't think any of us have thought of that. So you bring a lot to the table and we really appreciate you. And Thank we want you. you to know it. And so we just held your spot because we knew that you were on the way. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank and you. And also, um, just know that we're your family, okay? I appreciate that. <laughs> and I feel like I'm among family. <laughs> yeah. And Ben, and, and how, how do I, I want to pronounce your name right? Is it Maria? How do you pronounce it? I have Maria? to use arm. I have to use arm movements because it's a little tricky. So That's it's me, me, me. Okay. Ray like the sun. Ah, uh, like a drink of water. Me Ray. Ah. Uh. Me Ray. Ah. Uh. Oh, got perfect. that. So Ray, thank I you. Think, I think that you and you and Ben probably know that this is the place to be, right? Yes. <laughs> sure. I already knew that. <laughs> thank you. On Tuesdays. Yeah, I, I was scared that it was 5.30 oh, in the morning. Second, second, oh, no. fourth Tuesday. 5.30 in the morning. No, no, no. Oh, no, no I'm like, wow, these people are really going. Well, it doesn't say a.m. or p.m. on the website. So I was oh, like, yeah. well, <laughs> but, 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 but you, but you figured it out. So you're in the right place. You, you're <laughs> smart. You. So you're in the right yeah. place. <laughs> Thank you. Tell our. Thank you. All right. I see, okay. I see Carmen on, too. Our uh, Mr. Governor, hello, yep. Carmen. I am. Hello. I hello. just got home from the hospital, and oh. that, that was a fantastic presentation. And I just wanted to add that um, any education and any service projects would be great. And I wanted to let you know some encouraging news from a rehabilitation standpoint. We've got many, many more COVID survivors than we had months ago. So in my field, which is rehabilitation and physical therapy, we're getting the opportunity to rehabilitate more survivors. And, um, you know, the stories I could tell you would warm your hearts. The, you know, on any given day, we ha we've had rehabilitation success stories, but the ones pertaining to COVID right now, they've been particularly special. So thanks to the doctors and the nurses for doing all the great care and the caregivers who supported them in order to get the patients to the rehabilitation centers so we can rehabilitate them and get them back home where they belong. So thank you. This has been fantastic. Thank you. That's a great extra. Thank you. Yes. And also Carmen, and also Carmen, thank you for the COVID funds. You see, we have stretched them from December <laughs> yes. all the Good way to job. June, and we're still stretching. And we wouldn't be able to do that without you and your thoughtfulness. So you could just refer to us as the Rotary Covet Club. I love, it. I love it. Y'all keep up the great work. And he is just like family. If he's your family, he's my family. Too, right. so. I'm ready for a reunion. Family That's right. Reunion. Is she a member? Yeah. No, she's the district governor. Oh, thank you so much. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Thank you. Ms. It's good to see everybody's face, or yeah. mostly, yes. face, but everybody's name or what? It's it's just really good. Yeah. 